Hi, I'm Courtney Sims, Director of Advancement here at the Muni, and I am sitting here with Tracy Utzmeyers, our Production Manager, and Sean Smith, our Director of Operations, and I am so excited to talk about the Muni's iconic stage and all that went into this really amazing and important project. It was many things, but we started by observing inefficiencies and seeing what, and dreaming about what we could have. And then we started to make a list. And we started the list years before we uh, really got to the project. And we, by the time it was time to get the project up and rolling, we hired Fisher Docs, who's a theater consultant company. And they came in and reviewed our list with us and helped us dream a little bit more. And then we prioritized the list by what could really, what we could use in shows regularly, what would really advance the work on stage. And that sort of rose to the top of the list. And then there was still a bunch of dreams at the bottom of the list. And then we brought on H3, the architects, and started talking about the list with them and looking at the budget and making some very real choices about what we could achieve and what we couldn't achieve. Um, and H3 did a great job of helping us not just formulate our list, but, but create a great space. I think, Sean, wouldn't you say they did a good yeah, job? Yeah, they, they, you know, when we brought them in, I, I think we were looking for an architect firm that, that obviously would, would be able to achieve the sort of technical things that we wanted to do. Um, but we also, there was, there was the component of the historical nature of the Muni, and we wanted to make sure that these updates, they served the purpose of the shows on stage, but, but also that we were still sort of recognizing that tradition and that history of the community and, and sort of what people come to expect when they come out and see a see a show. So so I think that certainly we wanted them to do that that production element, but then also make sure that they didn't change what people felt, you know, was the beauty when they came out to see a show. That is a really hard question. There are a lot of favorite things. To quickly name a few, uh, the automation has really improved the work that we do on stage. The lighting is so vibrant, that LED lighting just really lights everything up and makes it feel so much more exciting. This, the new sound system and speaker locations which we've built into the theater make the sound more live and more present for every person in the audience, which is thrilling. Um, the spotlight system, the orchestra pit, it's tough to choose. I think that just, you know, from my standpoint, just, just to really complete it and to be able to put this sort of long-standing list of, of wants and needs into, into motion and to be able to show that to our audience, it was very exciting for that, that first night. I think the real benefit is it gives Tracy and her team the tools they need to, to basically take that production level to, to the next level for our audience. We're not limited by the space. The space is now part of the solution. Exactly. And, and because our list was really based in observations and inefficiencies, we designed them out of the theater. So just a simple um, example is the orchestra pit. We used to load it in and load it out every night. And now, because we don't have to do that because it doesn't get wet down there because of the amazing drainage, amazing drainage system, um, that stuff stays every night, which makes the quality of the sound of the orchestra better every night because you're not starting from ground zero every day. You're improving every day we put up a show. I think, um, you know, what people don't realize is the, the original stage towers were, were put in strictly to, to hide things behind the scenes and to support our light bridge structure, which, as you know, was put in in the 30s, so it was kind of limited on what it could do as well. Uh, the new towers, uh, when we designed this, we were trying to incorporate all these additional features, so certainly you've got the orchestra pit, but then we also have an orchestra break area for our staff. Uh, we have prop office, sound office, uh, light controls. Uh, again, with this technology, we need the space to, to control all of it. So, so all of that has been incorporated in the buildings. Yeah. And, and you brought up a really interesting topic, which is the light bridge. It's such a design um, feat. We did a, they did a, H3 did a beautiful job of creating that. We certainly, talking about history, we wanted it to be there. We wanted it to be stable. We wanted it to be safe for the workers. But we wanted it to have as little presence on stage as possible. And they did a beautiful job of that. It's a really great tool for us. That was very exciting because the entire time, I mean, 
this all sort of started with the light bridge. It was right. it needed to be replaced. Um, it was it had outlived its use, and um, we had many plans. We had very real expectations that that light we might have to do a season without the light bridge. We didn't know if we could get it done in the season. And we had all kinds of different plans for how we were going to light the shows, and um, it got designed early and designed well. And it, they started fabricating it, and the fabrication was on schedule. And one day somebody was like, "We think we can." Charlton, right? Was like, yeah. I think we could put the light bridge so, in this So we, yeah, we had planned on uh, putting up towers on either side of the theater to try and light the stage. It was going to be a very temporary situation, but we thought, you know, the audience would, would understand that. And then the day, you know, we've been working on, Tarleton was our general contract on the project. They came in one day and said, hey, we, we think we can just get this in on time. And it was, it was very exciting for everybody. Well, the lifts are in the orchestra pit, those personal trap lifts, and then there's three lifts out front of the orchestra pit. And so those had to be designed in a way that was that still created a cohesive space for the orchestra to have connection to the conductor and the conductor to have connection to the actors on stage. And that's part of the reason that the, the front, those big front lifts are designed in three sections. The center section is designed for the musical director to stand on and at a specific height, they can have direct eye contact with the performers on stage and the orchestra in the pit. And um, it's also designed so that that orchestra conductor can be fully in the pit and we can use those orchestra lifts and there's um, AV everywhere so that we can make make that conductor very present for the actors on stage through TVs and cameras. Well, certainly, I, I think that, um, you know, as we kind of alluded to earlier, the, um, the entire project, th there was no way to complete it in one year. So, so our, our first, the primary objective was to have the functional elements in place. What do we need to put a show on stage? And then we knew we would come in the following year and do sort of what I would consider more of the decorative uh, finishes, the, the, the architectural features. So, so when the audience comes out this season, they're going to see these new shell structures that flank either side of the stage. And, and that will be sort of the, the vision that, that, that people have of the beauty you know, for the future. That, that will be the look of, of what our stage is. Um, I think it was important when we were designing those, again, going back to the idea that we didn't want to change the beauty uh, we, we, we took a look at, at what the original towers were. So there was sort of a, a little bit of an Art Deco feel to them, uh, but we wanted something a little more modern than that, but sort of spoke to that. So, so when you look at, at the new shell structures side by side with, with the original pylon structures, which is what they were called at the time, you could kind of see that connection. Over the years, we lost a lot of those elements through, through additions and paint, but we kind of one of the tasks that we asked the architect was to kind of to bring that back together. So I think it's, it's exciting. It's, it's certainly, uh, it's a dramatic look for the theater. And um, I, I think the audience will really appreciate it. This is the first year we get to really include everything that the stage has to offer for our teams and our actors. And we're currently in the process of seeing what our directors and choreographers and actors can imagine and bring to the stage. And we cannot wait to share it with our audience. And we are so grateful to all of the donors who have helped us create a space that's really imaginative and has a lot of opportunity. So thank you for everyone who's participated in this project. And before we close, I'd just like to echo Tracy's sentiments and say thank you so much to all of our Second Century campaign donors. Because without you, this project would clearly not exist. In addition, these individuals and companies chose to have their generosity recognized by naming a few of the spaces we discussed today. Mr. and Mrs. James S. McDonald III and the JSM Charitable Trust, the Enterprise Holdings Foundation, the Burgess Family Foundation, William T. Kemper Foundation, Ameren Corporation Charitable Trust, Robert and Carol G. Jones, Marilyn A. Schnook and Stephanie A. Schnook, and Terry and Sally Schnook. Thanks for watching. I look so forward to seeing you in the seats this summer.